In this lesson, we're going to handle Git requests. Go to channel.dart. We have a single router, for example, but we're going to be making a dictionary application. So we don't just want to have example as the route. Let's change it to words. That will handle all the requests, whether it's a GET request or a POST request, they'll all go through words if we want to update the words in our dictionary. It uses a link function, but if we put everything here in this function, then our application channel would get really messy. So instead of a link function, we're going to use a controller. We'll put all of the logic to handle the requests inside the controller. So we'll replace this with link. And link takes a controller. It's a callback method that will return a controller. So we'll call our controller words controller. We haven't actually made it yet. We'll do that soon. Go to the live directory and right click and choose new directory. We'll call it controller. We're going to be making more than one controller. We'll put them all in this directory. Right click again, choose new file, and we'll call it words underscore controller dot dart. All right, let's make a new class. We'll call it words controller. That class will extend resource controller, which is part of Aqueduct. A resource controller will take care of a lot of the details of handling requests and returning responses. First, we're going to handle get requests. So we can do that with an annotation, which starts with an at sign. It's an operation, so go operation.get. This method is going to return a future, a future response. So the type will be response. Let's call our method get all words. We'll make this an async method. Eventually we'll be doing database operations, which can be expensive. And we'll return a response dot OK. This is an aqueduct method. OK is mapped to a response of 200. Now for the body, we want to return all of the words. We don't have a database yet, so we're just going to return a list. Let's create a list of words. It will be a list of maps. We'll make the key be word, and the first value will be horse. On Mac, if you hit Command-D, you can duplicate the line in IntelliJ. On Windows or Linux, that should be Control-D, I believe. Okay, let's make the others cow, camel, sheep, and goat. Now for a real dictionary, I'd want to have a lot more than just the word. Eventually I'd like to make a Mongolian dictionary, and so I'd have the definition in Mongolian, or the Mongolian word and the definition in English, example sentences, and more. But for now, we can just do a list of words. Let's add a semicolon. Go to channel.dart and let's import our words controller file. I'm going to import the full package rather than the relative path. 
All right, there it is at the top. Okay, go to terminal and let's start Aqueduct with Aqueduct Serve. The server's running. Let's go to Postman now. We'll make a GET request at localhost port 8888 slash words. Press send and we get a response. The response was a JSON string that the server passed back to us. What if we wanted to get just one word? A standard way of doing that is to add an ID to the path. So let's add a slash one to get the word at ID one. Press send. We get a 404 not found. Let's go back to the controller. On the path, add a slash, and then a colon, and the word ID. It could be any word, but we'll just call it ID. Now, let's handle that. Let's create a new method. In the annotation, you can write the string ID that will route get methods that have an ID with them to this method. Let's call the method get word by ID. So we need to get the ID so that we can use it to get the word from our list. There are a few ways to do that. One would be to get the request, which belongs to the resource controller, and from that take the path, and from that take the variables, and from variables I can get the value of the ID that was in the path. So I write the string ID, so let's parse it as an integer. Okay, that gives me the ID, so that would work. But there's another way to do it that's built into a resource controller, and that's to use binding. So I can use an annotation bind, and then bind the path with the name ID. So if there's something with the name ID in the path, then I'll cast that as an int. Now, any time that I don't have an int, Aqueduct will automatically respond with an error. All right, let's restart the server. And send. Yes, I get the word at ID 1. Let's try ID 0. Send. Yes, we get horse. How about something that's out of bounds, too big? Let's try 67. Uh, we get a 500 internal server error. So that was our problem on the server. 500 errors are not good. We have an invalid value, not in range, 67. So we should really add error handling for that type of thing. What if the client sends in a string instead of an integer? We'll type in hello, send, and we get an invalid value for ID, a 400 bad request. So this is something that Aqueduct automatically handles for us when we did the binding. Now let's try and get all of the words again. We'll take off the ID and hit send. 
we get a 404 not found. That's because we only have one route, and it's requiring an ID. We could make a different route for words, but there's a way to make the ID optional, and that's to enclose it in square brackets. So let's do that and restart the server. Now when we send a git request for the words path, Aqueduct returns all the words. And when we send a git request for words with an ID 3, we just get one word back, sheep. So great, it's handling both of them. The ID is optional now. So we've learned how to handle git requests. In the next lesson, we're going to handle post put, and delete. For now, let's see what happens if we try a post request on words. Hit send. We get a 405 method not allowed because we haven't implemented that yet. We'll do that next. See you soon.